in check their convictions about matters of dispute to themselves. He says, keep it between you and God. Yeah, you have the freedom. All right, no problem. Just keep it to yourself. And then in verse 23, oh, never mind. I got another slide. There's never too many bullet points. There's no need for them to broadcast their views, to force it down somebody else, to continually try to, to, to educate the world on their freedoms. Paul says, just tone it down a little bit. Tone it down. The strong should act in such a way that there's no reason to condemn themselves with respect to practices that they approve. And then he talks um, about those people who are unconvinced about freedoms, and so he talks to the weak, and he says, the weak should never do anything that would cause them to stumble because of, of following somebody else's freedom. Believers who still doubt should not eat. They should go out and eat things. While eating itself may not be wrong, it would violate their conscience. And Paul says, don't violate your conscience. Such eating is sin. Because he says, anything that is not done with faith, by faith, is a sin. And so if you're, go, uh, in their case, it was eating meat. If they went and ate meat, it would violate their conscience. It would destroy their relationship with God or hurt their relationship with God. And Paul says, don't do it because it's going to be sin because you think it's sin. Paul is again using faith in the sense of a conviction that one's faith allows to engage or not engage in a particular activity. He's not talking about your basic beliefs. He's talking about convictions that arise from those beliefs and putting it into practice. One of the things that, that we have in this world are traditions. Uh, some of you are probably too young to see Fiddler on the Roof. Uh, great movie. Um, and it had a lot to do with tradition. I, I, won't, I won't wow you by singing the theme song. Unless, unless you really want me to. You want me to sing? Don't make me sing. Anyway, we often don't even know where our traditions come from. I heard about one uh, lady who uh, was asked why she always cut the ends off of her ham uh, that she would cook uh, for a meal. And she says, I don't know, it's because my mother always did. So she calls up her mother and says, Mom, why did you always cut the ends off your ham? Uh, she says, I don't know, it's because Grandma always did. And so she calls up Grandma and says, Grandma, why'd you always cut your ends off your ham? She says, well, it's because my oven was too small. Oh. <laughs> Didn't have a pan big enough to fit the thing. You know, we often forget where our traditions come from. I don't know where our tradition that we stand up at communion and join hands all around the, the, the room came from. I don't know where that came from. I don't know where our tradition that says we, that we sing, blessed be the tie that binds, comes from. You know, but it defines who we are. It's what we're all about. You know, traditions are great. You know, stained glass windows are great, but they're not necessary for our church to worship. We like them. They're part of who we are. But they're, they're not essential. They have, some traditions have a great value in giving us this sense of identity. The traditions that are talked about in, in uh, Fiddler on the Roof uh, had great value in helping to protect them, to define who they were, to help protect their faith. Traditions are a good thing, for the most part. And so we should honor traditions. The Jews who lived in Rome used those traditions to help them to focus on God, to make sure that they were following the Lord, and so those traditions were very good. They were faced with persecution. They were faced with being spread all over the planet. And so they, they clung to these Old Testament rules that they had. And they were the traditions that defined who they were. And Paul isn't saying you have to give up those traditions. He's saying that, you know, he disagrees with them. But he doesn't tell them that they have to stop uh, doing them. He just says, we need to talk about this. We need to know how to handle it. Now, theology played a, a part in this whole process in the Roman church. Uh, there were people that were running around Rome and, and other places in, in uh, the Mediterranean area called Judaizers. And they believed that you ought to, to practice the Jewish religion after you became a Christian. Yeah, having faith was nice, but then to really please God, you had to become a Jew. And you had to pa practice Passover, and you had to read the Old Testament, and you, you had to learn Hebrew, and all the other things that made them Jews. And they said, you know, it's not just enough to believe in Jesus. You have to do all this other stuff. So there were some of those running around. There were people uh, who, like Paul, had 
realized what God had done when he, Jesus Christ had died on the cross, and he realized that we were free to do whatever, you know, to eat whatever we wanted, and, and God was accepting everybody who believed in Jesus Christ. So we have this whole continuum of, of Jewish folks that Paul had to deal with. All of those who believed that, that uh, you had to, to become Jewish in order to become Christian, and all the way to Paul's kind of person who said, no, 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 all that thing is unnecessary, we don't have to do that, you can eat it, whatever you want, and, and dump all the old traditions. So he had to deal with all of those. And so Paul tells the Roman believers, cut each other some slack. Just relax a little bit, okay? Don't worry about people who have different convictions than you are. Yes, you need to worry about people who have different faith than you do, but if their convictions are different, cut them some slack. We have to realize that people in our own day have traditions and cultures that they bring to, to various events. You know, I was in a church uh, a while back, um, and uh, in that church, uh, we were going to loan out our communion set to a group of believers who wanted to ha have communion. Well, I had some believers who came from a background that said, oh no, communion sets are, are sacred. And they had a really tough time just loaning out a piece of hardware to another church to allow them to celebrate communion because that was sacred to them. They came from that tradition. And we had to, we had to, to think about that and not cause other people to stumble. Now, Paul is going to say that tradition is never an excuse for sin. Okay, when he faced the Judaizers who said, oh, you have to add to your salvation, he said, you're wrong, and stop teaching that. He confronted it right to its face and never blinked an eye. So tradition was never an excuse for sin. Paul unapologetically calls on new converts to turn away from their old religions, to give up their old beliefs, and to turn to Christ. That's who he was and what he was all about. Now, one of the things that I, I was thinking about this in relationship to was the Hopi school that Skyler uh, went to visit last summer. Right? Yeah, do you have a good time? Okay. Um, you know, and, and Jim was talking about, Jim and Donna were talking about uh, Indian culture and it, how it relates to Christianity. And, and I was thinking about that in relationship to uh, this particular issue. Now, the Hopis have people who are called shamans. And the shamans help people to get in contact with uh, the, the gods of their religion. So there's the, the spirit of the bear and the spirit of the wolf. And I'm, there's lots of native cultures around, so I'm probably getting some of this wrong. Uh, but Paul would say Hopis have to give up the shamanism. Now, if they want to call their pastor a shaman, I don't think that's a problem. But if they're contacting the spirit of the bear or the spirit of the wolf or the spirit of the moose or whatever, that's going to be wrong. Now, does Paul say they have to give up dancing? No. You know, they have cultural dances and they make pots and they, they weave blankets. It's Paul saying, oh, no, you can't do that because us white folk don't know how to do that. You know, no, he's not saying that. He is saying your culture is great. That's tradition. And that's fine, as long as it's not another religion, as long as it's not worshiping other gods. So Paul says, some of the things you have to give up, you have to trust in Jesus Christ as your Savior, that you can't give up. But, you know, the cultural things, they're great. Do them all. Do them all. He is dealing with these debatable concerns. He is dealing with uh, these, these things that, aren't necessarily talked about in Scripture. They're neither said nor they're right nor wrong in Scripture. Paul's advice in this chapter, can, though, can only be applied to those things that are similar to the ones that he's talking about. Okay, he's talking about meat offered to idols and kosher laws. Well, one of these things is not the same, okay? If he's talking about, uh, you know, uh, believing in Jesus Christ, that's not negotiable, Okay? And we're not going to talk about that. That's not negotiable with us either. But if we're talking about things like meat offered to idols, if we're talking about traditions, if we're talking about those kinds of things, those are the things we want to be talking about today. Um, <coughs> excuse me. The New Testament draws a line between acceptable Christian beliefs 
and unacceptable Christian beliefs. I don't know what's unacceptable about that penguin, but I liked him. Um, maybe he's just too.